Good afternoon, whatever time you're joining from, this is Siemens Real Live Europe, and we're going to talk about using Polarian as a validation tool within the medical device and pharmaceutical industries. My name is Stephen Cook. I am a VP of Validation Services and Compliance Group. I'm based in the beautiful state of Washington on the west coast of the United States. Uh, I've got about 25 years of experience in this industry. Uh, everything from manufacturing engineering, quality initiatives for Asia Japan, building and designing clean rooms, uh, process automation, equipment automation. And for the last 15 years, I've been in software development and validation. I'd like Hello. to introduce Surat. Hello all, uh, this is uh, Sharat. Uh, I'm the VP of Validation Services uh, uh, for US. Uh, I have 15 plus years of experience in uh, medical device uh, and life sciences industry, uh, specifically focused on transforming ALM landscapes using Polarian. Okay, what we want to talk to you about today is the Polarian paperless validation tool. And truly in 2020, there really is no better time to go paperless, contactless. Uh, organizations have struggled with how to sign off documentation, how to sign off change controls. Uh, with everyone working from home, most people have not gone back to work. We anticipate not going back until mid 2021. Uh, the more articles I read, organizations are going to be reducing their footprint over the next year. Uh, and the, the remote workforce is probably going to become a part of our daily reality. So really, this is where we need tools that can adapt to the environment that we're working on. And Siemens Polarian is a state of the art, electronic records, electronic signatures, compliant, paperless, contactless validation system with the computer software assurance workflow and templates built into it. And if you're not familiar with the computer software assurance or the CSA acronym, this is the several year long initiative coming out of the FDA and industry for how we transform our current validation process into a focus on documentation for an audit to a focus on quality deliverables. So Polarian is very low cost for what you're getting. It's a zero footprint and it is 100% paperless, a true paperless system. No hybrid, no DocuSign for signatures, Polarian is, does it. So if you look over on the left hand side, I'm, I'm betting that there are some validation analysts that are looking at that and say, hey, that's my desk, right? Because I know that's what my desk looked like once upon a time. Um, we have tremendous amount of paper artifacts. This is 2020 guys, it's 2020 and we are still, most of us doing paper based test cases um, you know, when we're not doing something on paper, we're still routing it around in a document management system, creating it in Word, uh, you know, printing it out, putting it in a binder somewhere. And it's estimated that a company with no more than two sites uh, and 20 GXP software burns at least $100,000 a year due to those paper inefficiencies. And, and, and I think the right hand side is going to be obvious to everyone but the issues with the current paper-based process. Number one, 100% paperless, pa paper-based process with overhead and paper handling of records. You got collating, printing, signing, scanning it back, or taking a photo, archiving it, retrieving it when you need to for an audit. We often send these off to Iron Mountain and then you know somebody needs it and pulls it back. And there's all the cost and storage of that paper, the, the documentation centers. Uh, traceability. Traceability is a major issue. We often, when we're doing software validation, we're tracing as an after effect. We're mapping out our requirements. We're trying to make all of them fit. Uh, so traceability, it's, it's time consuming and it's error prone. Other, probably what I think is the biggest problem with paper is no reusability of artifacts. Between valid and valid, everyone's writing their own test cases. Uh, you're not necessarily involved in other people's projects, so you don't know what they've written. And so we, we can't reuse these test cases. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't lend themselves well when they're on paper to approve it once and any system can pick it up and use it or when you've got to change to that system or use the same test case. So we're writing test cases over and over and over again. And there's no visibility, like I just said, into validation of similar systems. And then what do we do, especially in 2020, once we've got it, we email it around, 
we wait for review comments to come back or we upload it to a SharePoint site with an email notification. We get comments back. So we also have siloed paper based test and defect management cycles. Almost everyone out there today is still doing testing on paper uh, and defects on paper. And they're again, you're filling out that defect form manually. Off some, some organizations are even pen to paper and then they route it around for review and then they route it around for approval. And you've got three people signing off on it. Typically the BPO, the SO, the quality person, all of them working from their home office. So it's getting scanned in. You've got to you refer to attached signature. It's just a tedious process. When you're on a paper based process, you know you have no visibility to paper based change controls that the aging of the change control or the deviation. Uh, back when I was a Val lead, I, I would go through the logbook every month to find all of the change controls that were more than 60 days old so I could follow up on them. And then there's no intelligence on, 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 on a paper based system. So looking at comparison between ALM and, and other validation tools or types of projects that are out there. Uh, number one, requirements management, all of them do it. Uh, E-signature and on trail, all of them do it. We're going to get into some of the details so that really critically matter. Uh, testing functionality, test cases, test runs, automatic defect creation. Siemens Polarian does this in addition to the competitors. Defect management functionality, Siemens Polarian does this in addition to the competitors. So now is where we start to differentiate. Automatic calculation of GXP applicability, system risk level, your overall risk level, your functional risk, and your testing types. Siemens Polarian is the only one of these four that does that, that has CSA baked into it, the FDA guidance. Document management functionality, including uh, being the repository if needed, the routing for review, approvals, storage, exports, on-demand documentation like a traceability matrix, uh, that is going to be point in time, real world data and information for an auditor. Siemens Polarian is the only one that does that. Automated document change history. Siemens Polarian, the only one that does that. End to end live traceability. Siemens and JIRA. And this is a big thing, guys. So we typically do a traceability matrix. We do it in paper. Uh, it's a tedious process mapping it all out. And then we have a change control and that first change control, your paper based traceability matrix is literally out of date now because you should be tracing in your periodic testing of requirements and then it's done through change control. With Siemens Polarian, you can generate an on demand traceability matrix that's going to have the accurate up to date information at that point in time. Integrated risk based technology and methodology, Siemens Polarian is the only one that does this. Full CSA CSV workflows. This is a computer software assurance and computer system validation. Uh, Siemens Polarian has this baked into it. End to end CSA CSV templates. Again, Siemens Polarian is the only one. And not only are the templates there, but Siemens Polarian offers the flexibility of putting those templates in your company's own format. So it will look and feel like all of your other validation documentation. Generation of an automatic system inventory, Siemens Polarian. Again, the only one that will give you an output and tell you all the systems and the location of the site that it's at. Automatic trace generation and full requirements, defect traceability, report by release. Siemens Polarian does that, JIRA does that well. But when you really look at the comparison between all these systems, Siemens Polarian is the one that, that has for most validation and IT quality professionals the tools and the features that you need. And again, it is an incredibly competitive product in terms of cost with very easy implementation. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to you, Sharat. Thank you, Stephen. Now in the time available, uh, I will show as much of uh, Polarian as possible and how Polarian uh, can be configured and used uh, to address different types of validations. So as you all can see the screen uh, right now, this is a computer system validation template that we're looking at. And as you can see, um, you know, you can see all of the classic phases of uh, computer system validation here, right here in the left hand side, the planning requirements, design, build, testing all the way through defects and change management. And in the uh, home page, 
you can also get a snapshot of where each deliverable is at. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these uh, documents are in a draft state, some are in approval, some are approved. So all of that information is available at the fingertips of the resource. And uh, every uh, user of Polarian gets their own dashboard right? because they can. Uh, so let me go into the dashboard of this particular user. And when I go into the dashboard, I can see that it not only displays the uh, deliverables that this individual is responsible for within a project called Camstar, it also displays uh, documents that are waiting for him to act on from Team Center, SAP, Trackwise, all these other projects. So he doesn't need to scramble through the various list of projects to get to a document that he should act on. So all of that information is available right here within his uh, My Polarian dashboard. So uh, going back to the ease of configuring these templates, and uh, as I said, we're looking at uh, the computer system validation template. Let me show you a uh, an equipment validation template. So this is a, a, a lab equipment uh, Polarian template, a lab equipment validation template. And uh, if you notice the difference here in the left hand side, uh, in, in a lab equipment validation, you don't have those elaborate lengthy phases. Typically, I mean, lab equipment validation tend to be uh, quick. So lab managers can have the uh, ability to look at all of their equipment uh, right here. So if you look at physical testing lab, uh, you can see uh, the um, elaborate, I mean, the equipment within the, the physical testing lab. If you look at stability, you can see all of those that are under stability and so on and so forth. If you look at analytical, you can see all of these equipment that are in the analytical laboratory and within each of these folders, all of the validation documents are, are available. And the same with, and uh, let me show you another template very quickly, uh, which is SAP ECC. So in SAP ECC, uh, as you can see, uh, SAP projects usually tend to be uh, really uh, exhaustive. They have their own nomenclature. They are different. Uh, they are so huge. So people, you know, use different jargons for SAP. You know, when a regular uh, CSP calls what a regular CSP calls planning, and SAP, uh, you know, may call project preparation. Um, so all of those can be configured very easily. And uh, let me uh, look at um, the uh, documentation portion, right? Uh, like my colleague Steven said, um, a lot of ALM systems, you know, have only parts of functionality. If, if an ALM system is good at defects and testing, it doesn't have the automation that Polarian offers. It doesn't have the document management that Polarian has, right? So let me uh, focus on the documentation aspect very quickly. So I'm showing you a system risk assessment document from Polarian, and it looks just like a regular document uh, with all of these sections and the and the users can see, um, you know, who signed this document, what is the version number, there is a signature block here as well. And it also includes uh, Polarian's work items as well within this document. And uh, here, it automatically calculates the system risk rating based on uh, the value selected for criticality and complexity. Because of the lack of time, I'm not going to get into the automation uh, portion of uh, Polarian, but even with without any automation, just with industry standard, most current industry standard document templates, the users are going to see at least 30% reduction in their validation cycle times because there is no paper whatsoever, right? So you're moving, so it, it is all, um, it is all electronic now. So now let's add in automation, right? Since we don't have the time to show you how automation works in Polarian, I will at least show you some reports, which is the output of the automation. Okay. So let me go into uh, reports here. And there are many uh, reports that are readily available. Uh, some are configured uh, for validation. Uh, but I will show you a, a classic uh, report, right? That we all have trouble 
assembling just because it takes a lot of time to put this together. It's a requirement traceability matrix. And, uh, you know, I was a validation resource in the past and I used to spend days uh, and sometimes weeks if the system is large to assemble all of this and which is now available at the click of a button here. And uh, the beauty of it is the users can navigate. It's not a plain text document. The users can navigate to these specific artifacts just by clicking on that. It'll take you to what that artifact is in this case, a design spec. And uh, if a user wants to look at uh, a defect view, there is also uh, a defect traceability matrix as well. So as you can see here, all of those requirements that have defects are highlighted in a shade of red. And those requirements that don't have any defects uh, are in green. So it will also give the and this is completely automatic. It depends just you click on this button and it will show you these defects and any system may have multiple releases. So if you're interested in looking at a different release, then all you have to do is select this. Let's say you want to look at release four. You click that, click OK, click apply. As you can see, the view has changed because now it is only showing those defects uh, that have resulted from release four. So this is a, a CSV view. Let me flip to uh, equipment view real quick and show um, a report from equipment validation template. So uh, let me show you system inventory report. Okay, and you can filter by laboratory. So usually every site has many laboratories. So if you want to look at all of the laboratories, and you can select all laboratories and as you can see here it generates a nice report with all of the equipment under each of that those laboratories along with the status of validation so for this equipment validation is still in progress so it will show you that in, a, in yellow and for this equipment it has already been validated uh, and it will show as approved and it will also display the date on which the validation report is issued and uh, there are there may also be equipment that have never been validated so you can see those as not validated and if you choose to validate those you can directly go from here and, and uh, start their validation so that is a quick example of uh, an, an equipment uh, validation report and uh, not only that uh, there is all there are also uh, many reports uh, other reports automated reports that we can look at, uh, but I'm going to uh, finish up with uh, a couple of really cool reports, uh, one of which is a, a release dashboard. So if you have a, a piece of software that underwent multiple releases, then you can see you know, how many requirements have been added um, to this in this specific release, how many requirements have been added. And, and as you can see this release, it, there seem to have been many new requirements that have added to this release. And you can also see it in a time trending chart. So you can see uh, how releases are trending on a time chart. And there is also a different view of how many re requirements have been impacted by each of these releases, as you can see in the pie chart. And, and finally, for any validation, uh, it's a risk-based validation. Risk-based methodology is at the heart of any validation. So. Uh, let me show you uh, an automated report here. If you want to look at for Camstar application, if you want to look at the risk profile of, of Camstar, of the risk profile of the requirements in Camstar, uh, so you can look at the, the statistics here. So as you can see, a lot of the, the requirements uh, have been, you know, are in lower risk rate in state one, and then you progress to two and then three. But there are a good chunk of requirements that are high risk as well, which is four and five. So using Polarian, uh, in summary, using Polarian, validation can be made paperless and contactless in a span of two to three weeks. So think about the power of all of the automation and all of the savings that you can get from being paperless. It is the right thing to do and the time is now. 
So request us for a separate demo uh, if you uh, like this uh, presentation, and we look forward to sharing more details with you. Thank you for the opportunity.